Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video showing you guys my new pickup here. It's a uh, DEFI, however you say it. So it's a DEFI DF16202 is the part number. It's a standalone oil pressure gauge, and I'm going to be installing it into my Honda S2000. Um, I read online, and I'm pretty sure the route I'm going to go is to pretty much use the same port as the OEM oil pressure sensor. So I'm just going to unthread that and thread the DEFI sensor in there. And i um, also going to be doing a couple other things like an Ingalls uh, torque dampener here. So this will have to rotate out of the way. So essentially it's just going to take the place of this. Now this is unplugged currently. And all this plug do from what I've read online is just turn the oil pressure idiot light on on the dash when you lose oil pressure. So if you leave it unplugged, it'll never come on. So what I plan to do is just leave it unplugged, remove this plug, put the new oil pressure sensor plug in from this, run the wires all the way back to the dash, and I have a uh, auto meter single gauge pod that I'm going to put this gauge in. I feel like this is the most important gauge for the S2000. As you guys know, if you follow my channel, I have a baffled oil pan, and I have a baffle welded in probably a couple years now. Never really had any problems, but I've never been able to know if the oil pressure has been good or not when I'm on track. Usually if you do see the uh, little light light up from the OEM sensor, it's too late and your engine is done because you've lost oil pressure pretty significantly to the point where the light comes on. So this will be taking the place of it and will just tell me live oil pressure all the time. So I can glance over at it while in a turn, see if it's dropping at all, see if the baffle is doing its job and um, you know pull off the track if I see the needle drop a little bit while I'm on track. I got an analog one. They have digital ones but of course it'll look better when I turn it on but I wanted an analog one so you can just see it in your peripheral vision of where the needle is and it should stay up you know pointed straight up and down in the 90 psi range when you're on track revving it out so if you know in your peripheral you're not really going to see a digital number but if you see an analog style gauge where the needle in a certain area you'll be able to tell real quick if your engine's healthy or not on, on the track so um, that's my plan. I really like this look of this gauge and the quality of it just from looking at the, the face of it. And it's a it's a new product. I mean, it's it's rather new. It, it was released in 2019, I believe, for the U.S. market. This model, you know, it comes with this um, you know gauge pod, universal gauge pod with like a uh, aluminum mounting base. You can probably double sided tape to your dash if you wanted to, and it fits in there um, pretty loosely. I'm not sure exactly how that's supposed to stay in there. Maybe when this bottom feature is clamped it'll lock the gauge in but it's it's pretty wobbly in there right now not sure why um, but this may look good in the corner not kind of near where the uh, air vent is that for the defroster but I, I plan to use the autometer uh, gauge pod single gauge pod as you can see you have extension wire here I believe this runs directly to the uh, sensor and then these are your power wires and that is your actual sensor wire right there Hopefully I have enough lead length. I, um, I should be fine. We'll see here. I'll let you know if I don't. Um, but yeah, this is what the kit comes with. I got it for around $230 shipped from Sport Compact Warehouse. I'll leave the link in the description below. So I read online that the um, OEM oil pressure sensor had the same thread as this sensor because the guy said it just directly swapped in. When you compare them, it's clearly not the case. This is a tapered PT thread, and this looks like a you know parallel thread with a much more coarse thread pattern with an o-ring face seal on it so these definitely aren't directly interchangeable which kind of bums me out because I was hoping to just thread this in and be done alright guys so I think I was wrong I don't believe that's the oil pressure idiot light that must have to do with the uh, VTEC solenoid and stuff I thought that that was the oil pressure light uh, sensor but it's not um, I believe what they were referring to is down here he pulled this little rubber cap off and you can see in there there's a little terminal and uh, I'll get a better view for you. Well, you can see that side there's a hex. So if I unthread that hex, hopefully I have a pipe fitting in there. And I do see behind it there are some threads sticking out, which is a good sign that it is a pipe fitting. And that's the hole we want to replace it with. All right, so there's this little Phillips head screw that you take off from the ring terminal inside this little rubber boot. The ring terminal right there, and that's the only thing that was on the sensor. So now you can see the sensor pretty clearly right there, and you can just unscrew it without worrying about twisting wires now. All right, so to remove the OEM sensor, I'm going to use this 24 millimeter socket, 
and uh, reducer to a 3 8 inch ratchet since the 24 millimeter sockets usually come in half inch drive and you can push the hose slightly out of the way down there and get the socket over the OEM sensor. Of course you can't use this to tighten the new one and it's got a much smaller hex on it so you'll be able to get a wrench in there. So both of these sensors take note are a tapered fitting. You're not going to screw them down to infinity until an O-ring compresses and, and seals. The threads themselves crush into each other and make the seal um, but you're going to want to use a little bit of Teflon tape over the threads to install the new sensor. You're not going to want to put the Teflon tape anywhere near the oil orifice that enters there. You're going to want to start the Teflon tape a couple threads up and wrap it in the opposite direction that you're going to screw this in so that when you are screwing it in it is trying to wrap the Teflon tape um, continuously onto this as opposed to unravel it. Go ahead and get in here with your ratchet. 24 millimeter. Get it right on the sensor. Make sure you're going the right way. Actually, I'm going to unplug this one up here because I feel like I'm going to smack it with the ratchet and maybe break that one. Okay, broke it loose here. I'm not sure if oil is going to come out of this. Shouldn't really because there's no engine, there's no oil in the engine right now, but there might be some in this cavity here. So before I loosen it all the way, I'm going to get a rag and stuff underneath there. There we go. That's definitely a tapered thread, so I think we're in the right spot. There is a little bit of oil dripping out, but I'll pull the sensor out of the way. As you can see, here's the OEM sensor. Definitely a tapered thread, which is awesome. I found the right spot. So basically, this is just like an on-off switch sensitive to pressure. I'm not sure exactly when it trips. If the pressure falls below a certain number, this will turn on and turn that light on in your dash. All right, so this is the uh, this new sensor. And when you thread it in, obviously, when you're looking at it this way, you turn it clockwise to thread it in. So when you look at it this way, you want to wrap the tape counterclockwise. But usually when you're wrapping it, you're looking at the front of the sensor. So just wrap it from the front of the sensor clockwise. That way it'll be opposite when you turn it around to install it. You don't want to do more than two revolutions around this thing. It, that pretty much increases the diameter of the threads and may cause them to not seat properly. Hold it with one finger. A couple threads up from the start so you don't get any in the uh, in the block when you go to install this pull it tight that's one revolution and try to spread it a little wider and that's two revolutions so I'm gonna pull that off push that down and as you can see Got the first two threads exposed on there. So the thing with pipe threads is you don't, there's really no torque value to use them to. So you pretty much just do a finger tight uh, application and then you do turns past finger tight is the uh, ideal thing you want to do. So these don't have, this is like a 90 degree fitting so the orientation isn't critical. But you're going to want to, uh, you know, just get it finger tight and then do like, you know, a turn, a turn and a half past finger tight with a wrench and leave it. You don't want to rear it down because since it's tapered the threads will keep biting into each other and expanding and if you ran this all the way flush it's going to put a lot of radial stress on the block and the cast aluminum piece of the block so you don't want to over tighten this. Alright so this is a 17 millimeter wrench that's what the hex is on this one definitely a lot smaller than the 24 millimeters before so before you go to tighten with a wrench take a look at where your wires are coming out of the sensor they're exactly on the bottom right now, so I want to rotate it, you know, a full revolution until they're pointed at the bottom again and keep track of where you kind of are with them because the turns past finger tight technique is the key. Alright, so I looked up a chart online just to verify the turns past finger tight value. I couldn't really find one for this. This is a PT 1 8 inch by 28 thread count. Um, tapered thread. I believe the taper on this is a 55 degree taper. I found, you know, that you can find a lot of tightening torque charts for NPT fittings and the equivalent of this in NPT is 1 8 inch 27 by, you know, it's got a 60 degree taper on it. Very similar but very slightly different. But the value the NPT fitting calls for is two to three turns past finger tight. So I'm going to take this one just past two and uh, call it a day. Here's just a close-up of the sensor in there, nicely positioned, wire straight up top, 
getting it as far away from that uh, uh, oil line right there. All right, guys, so I got the exterior routing all set here. I want to show you quick. The connector from the sensor itself is about maybe uh, you know 10 inches long, so I just routed it straight over to the frame. And of course, there was engine movement and stuff when you're racing, so I made sure there was a good amount of, of slack there. And then it's zip tied with the OEM harness plugged together right here. And the wire itself follows the OEM conduit all the way back through that little uh, plastic uh, rectangular uh, protector from the coolant hoses that goes through there. And then it's a little gray wire down there underneath the catch can. You can see it follows the OEM harness. And there it is right next to the catch can again. And so it, it follows the OEM harness all the way to there. And then I found the easiest and least invasive way I found to go into the interior is, as you can see, it's this gray wire right here. And then my OEM air pump stuff right here. I ended up poking a hole through the, the hood release cable grommet here. So um, I fed it in with there. And I'm going to put a little silicone around that when I'm done just to make sure it's sealed. But this, this rubber, even though it's 20 years old, is super stretchy. So I just poked a hole and stretched it to fit the connector through, which isn't too big. And then I pulled the rest of the wire through. And it is clamped pretty tight on there, so I, I think the silicone would be overkill, but um, why not? All right, so for the routing on the inside of the car, it might be a little tough to see. All right, so this is your clutch pedal and your hood release. It's going to be right down there behind that harness, uh, right there. So the wire I have fed up, it's this gray one right here behind the ECU wires and whatnot. And um, if you look straight up, you can see daylight through there. That's because I have the pillar, the stock pillar, removed right now. And I'll pull it out of here and show you that uh, the stock pillar's out. And it's pretty easy to feed this wire up through since it's somewhat stiff with the um, shrink tube all the way across it. So comes right out of there. And this is how much lead length you're going to have left. It's almost perfect like it was made for this car because you have maybe an extra 10 inches of of a service loop here to to play with when you pull your gauge out of the uh, the pillar so you can just feed that back down into that cavity and have it loose in there when you put the gauge on so that's the sensor wire all complete and uh, now I'm gonna do the, the power wire to the gauge All right, guys so this is the gauge pod I'm gonna be using it's an auto meter uh, single gauge pod that's the part number for it um, this here is the pod and it was only like $33 shipped so not too bad. I'm not a huge fan that this doesn't span the entire pillar, so you will see some texture differences and a slight mismatch in color, but the color is very, very close. I was looking at science of speed, and then I was even considering doing a dual gauge pod, but for right now, I'm just going to keep the oil pressure as my only gauge, and I want more to look at when I'm on the track. So this seemed to be the most budget-friendly option. I um, I don't really plan to install the pins it comes with. When you get this pod, it comes with four little pins. So they want you to drill through this for a clearance hole, and then they want you to drill through your OEM pillar and pop these in to hold it in. But I just plan to use some 3M double-sided tape on the back side of this and stick it on there because it'll, it'll be just as strong of a connection, and I don't have to drill through any panels. The only thing I had to do was I took a Dremel with a little sanding wheel, and I went around this very slowly and kind of slightly increase the diameter here because when I got this the gauge didn't fit through but now it fits nicely and snug I think they undersized these because I'm sure all the gauges have slightly different tolerances to them and they want you to just have to fine-tune it once you get it for your specific gauge so, alright so the single gauge pod is mounted up worked pretty well and I drilled a hole right above this rib here to feed the wires and I drilled it just large enough to fit one of the larger connectors through and you can see it's in there behind the gauge pod. But, uh, you know, overall, I don't think it looks too bad. I definitely don't love it, but um, I might get used to it. It might grow on me, but I wish this was one piece. I know Science of Speed sells a single piece full molded pillar, but I um, read a lot online about how it's off color and it's very cheap and it doesn't fit well. So, uh, you know, I didn't want to spend $80 on a piece that really didn't match the interior. This does match very well with the color, as you can see. Uh, it's almost perfect. The texture's just slightly off from the mold, but, um, you know, going to be a good addition to the interior. You definitely want to install it 
and it's molded to fit just above the OEM uh, window defroster mount, so it's not going to interfere with that at all. So the wiring is pretty straightforward for an S2000. So you got um, you got a orange wire, a red wire, a white wire, and a black wire. Black's obviously ground. Orange is supposed to go to 12 volts while ignition is on. Red wire goes to 12 volts straight to the battery, which means 12 volts is always supplied. And the white wire goes to illumination to a 12 volt source while the instrument panel lights are on. In the S2000, it's pretty simple. This is a picture of my iPhone, but this is straight up um, spade terminals underneath the, the dash there where the fuse box is. And this is a picture I found online, but the one on top is 12 volts with illumination. The one in the middle is 12 volts constant, and the one on the bottom is 12 volts ignition switched. So uh, that matches exactly to the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and wire all those. And the ground, I'm just going to choose the ground that's closest to this underneath the with it. There's a couple different spots and bolts you can use to ground, but um, make sure you have one of these little electrical kits with all these different connections on them. I'm just going to crimp them on to the ends of the wires. You know, there's four right here. Okay, so we're ready to install a pillar back in the car, plug in the gauge. Here's the connections for the power. I'll show you how I did them. As you can see right there, I have the white wire going up top, which is, I believe, the um, illumination switched one. Red in the middle is 12 volts constant all the time, and orange on the bottom is ignition switched 12 volts. That's all hooked up. And the ground, I just grounded right there with a ring terminal to an existing ground in the car already. I already am stealing another ground up here. Right there, that one is for my uh, Gretti E-Manage. So as you can see, I got both wires fed through this cavity up here now. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. They're both exactly the same length, which works awesome. Now I just gotta feed them through that little hole I made in the pillar, pop the pillar back in, and see how she looks. All right, so I'm actually really surprised there's not like an S2000 part number on this gauge kit because it works out so perfect. I can't even make this up, but I have a nice little service loop sticking out of here. No more than six inches sticking out of the, uh, the gauge pod. As you can see, it's all installed now. Um, but I'm gonna pop the gauge in there and connect it. And you know, this just happened to be with the routing I chose, how much slack I have left in each connector. And it came out damn near perfect. Super easy wiring. I don't think you could get a better kit for the money uh, to run a standalone pre oil pressure gauge in your S2000. All right, so I just pushed the wires back in there. As you can see, we got a clean install on the gauge. Light it up here for you in a second, but that looks pretty sharp. Right in your face too when you're driving. It's about even with the steering wheel but there's plenty of clearance for your hand still. Guys, so we're up to full running temp now, uh, just letting it idle. Uh, just under a thousand RPM, hovering right around 30 psi on the oil pressure, which is as good as far as I know. And I just want to show you how responsive it is. I'll show the tack down here from when I when I tap the tachometer to how quick the gauge reacts. Pretty instantaneous. Of course, I got a little bit of an idle problem right now. I got to do an idle relearn on the car because the battery's been disconnected all winter. But, uh.
coming up even more. It's dropping a little more down to like 24 PSI, but you guys get the point. That's how the gauge looks. This is kind of how it looks when you're driving, right in your face, can't miss it. It's definitely kind of in your peripheral vision for your left eye when you're on the track. I don't think it's going to be a problem at all keeping an eye on this thing when you're, you know, mid-turn and whatnot. Uh, it's easy to glance over at as opposed to looking down here, which takes your eyes off the track. Or people do them, gauges down in here, or over on the dash way over here. You pretty much have to turn your whole head or move your eyes significantly to see the, the gauge readings for those. So I think this is the most practical spot to put it in these cars. So uh, give the video a thumbs up, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if I helped you out. Let me know if you plan to do the same setup or if you have another one you'd recommend. And uh, I always like to hear from you guys. So uh, give a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.